Welcome to InfamousHorrors.com today, John, and thank you again for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right, so how long have you been involved with uh, Alone? It's actually been a, a, pretty, a pretty long journey. I was first given this script in 2013, actually. Um, uh, I was first sent Matthias Olsen's script by Mike McCary. Um, at that point, uh, I then started developing the script with uh, Matthias and Henrik Axen uh, and Mike. We spent a couple years developing, or maybe a year developing the script. We, at that time, tried to get financing. Was were not able to get the amount that we wanted. Um, and so then I kind of, at that time, was moving much more into series and getting back into television. And I drifted away from the project, and the project drifted away from me. Uh, and it wasn't until the end of 2017, um, after I had been working with uh, Millhouse and Paperclip, we'd done a different uh, feature called All Square together. And we were looking for a project in the fall. And I immediately thought about this Matthias' script. That's the one that kind of always had gotten away from me that I really wanted to make. Um, I put in a call to Mike McCary. They still hadn't made it yet. I know they had been working with other directors, but it kind of had was just uh, uncl you know, gestating at that time. And from the time I called Mike till the time we were in production was probably a matter of four weeks. Um, so it had been a long time and then suddenly it was up and running and the production dragged out a little bit. There was, there was, there was, you know, all sorts of mini dramas. We had a, you know, one of our actors got injured. We had to stop, you know, we had to shoot for a while, then go back and shoot at that time. Then I was doing a, a, a series for Netflix at that time. So I had to finish shooting my series and we kind of spent a lot of time editing the movie and went through a number of different uh, kind of, you know, it, it took us a while to really craft it and post till we were feeling great about it. So it's actually come from the time I first got involved. I think it's been a seven year journey at this point. And how was the casting process? Because George and Mark were just fantastic in this. Was there any like rigorous casting auditions that you had to go through just to find George or Mark or how was it? just having them on the project because they were both so fantastic in alone. Uh, I'm glad you say so. I completely agree with you. Uh, funny enough, Jules was um, the first person I thought of for it because we had worked once together on, a, on an episode of television. It was really a one day shoot uh, that, that we were involved together, but she made a real impression on me and I thought she would be the perfect actor for this role. That being said, we still went down a long, arduous process of interviewing and talking to a lot of actors, uh, a lot of actresses throughout that period, and a lot of auditions. And, it, you know, it, it was, a, it was a, a long process that then worked its way all the way back to Jules. And I was thrilled that she was the one who was kind of the last one standing. And uh, we were very lucky to have her. Uh, Mark, it was, a, it was a, a different scenario in that we had been going through a very long list of people and just no one felt right. Um, and we were getting really close to the point of shooting. And I was getting very nervous that we just were not going to find this person. And the whole thing falls apart if, if either one of those roles is not the right person. There's, there's right. no move. Um, and at a very desperate point in that casting process when we were just you know, a short period away from rolling cameras, uh, our casting director, Sari Knight, had mentioned to me, what about Mark Menchaca? And uh, I knew that name. We had some close mutual friends and I was aware of his work. And, uh, and I thought, oh, wow, you know, he would be amazing. Um, I don't know what we have to do to get him. And I, I basically pulled every string I could. We have, we have a, a very close mutual friend in uh, the actor, Michael Kelly, who's a great friend of mine and a tremendous actor himself. And him and Mark had worked together on the David Simon show, Generation Kill, 
and that's where they had um, developed the friendship. So before calling Mark, I called Michael. And I said, Mike, you got to convince Menchaca to do this movie. Uh, and uh, I guess he was convincing enough. He told him that he, <laughs> he, he made up some lies about me, I guess. And uh, Mark, you know, it turns out Mark, uh, what I never anticipate is that he's sort of one of the all time great guys and one of my favorite people in the world. So um, I made a great friend out of it too, and him and Jules, but, but Mark, you know, anyone who spends a day with Mark Menchak will not forget it. He's just uh, one of the most fun people around. So, which helps when you're doing a movie like this, because it's a very punishing kind of movie on the actors and even on the crew. You need, you need people that you want to be around. It, it doesn't always work out that way. And a great performance is a great performance, but something about these two, you know, I love them both as people. And I think they, they took care of each other. You know, they were able to have a lot of laughs when the camera stopped rolling and, and unwind in those hours. And, and as a result, they, I think they had great chemistry together. Yeah, and did you have any inspirations for your directing style when you did this? Because it is like an isolated cast where there's like a two-man show on there. And we have films like Gary like that with Matt Damon and Casey Affleck. And we have movies like Buried where it's just a one-man show. So did you have any kind of inspirations where you took something from a previous movie and kind of had it as that kind of vibe you were going for in this? Because I also got... I spit on your grave a little bit on the road in this as well. So were there any inspirations to your directing style in, alone? Sure. Uh, well, I think one obvious in, inspiration that we did, you know, but, but one that, that immediately comes to mind is Duel, Spielberg's Duel. Yeah. Um, because that's really like, a, that's almost a one man show, that one. Uh, and and the you know a movie like Duel lets you know that yes you can you can tell a story this minimal and if and if you're creating suspense then the audience will go along for it so so Duel kind of gave us uh, gave us a little inspiration um, Deliverance is always a big one in my mind uh, the, just the the in Deliverance man versus man man versus nature you know, that the elements and, and what they're up against are, are equally dangerous. Um, and then another, you know, another inspiration for me, uh, albeit somewhat of an, uh, you know, a oblique reference, but is uh, the movies of uh, Michael Haneke. Um, I always felt like while his movies aren't necessarily obvious suspense thrillers, He's, I always felt the master of creating and sustaining tension. And um, he does it through, through his camera and composition, but he also does it through, through his editing and how he holds a shot and how he sustains a shot and how, you, how, how he kind of hangs the cut over the audience in a, in a way, in his case, sadistically at times, which is, you know, very which is a lot of fun. And, and he kind of, I learned from him just the power of the cut and that you don't, you know, you, you can't be impatient. You actually have to, a cut is a significant thing. Uh, and you don't just do them haphazardly, just cut the things because you think the audience is not paying attention. And in many ways, too many cuts makes the audience not pay attention. You know, let, let a cut be significant. So um, I think he was a big inspiration. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us at InfamousHorrors.com. It's been real fun talking to you, John, and congratulations on alone. It's a really fun clip. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for talking to me. Of course. All right. Cheers. Have a good one, John. Thank you.